Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Moggy, the Kingdom of Magic, episode 13 review. That is 1 3. So, this episode, first of all, came out like two days ago, and I didn't review it then, mainly because wasn't feeling too hot. It really wasn't. But today, felt feel pretty good today. I really do. Throw feel a lot better. All the semen's out, no homo. All the mute. Well, I'm still calling up mucus. That's that's still happening, but I do feel a lot better. The sinuses are feeling a lot better too, but occasionally I need to blow my nose and you know mucus and blood because adverse effects because of nasal necks and that kind of stuff makes the nasal makes the sinuses itchy in my case. But um, that being said, I do feel a lot better, and we're here. That's the way it is. And if you don't like it, too bad. Now, that being said, the episode, because that's what you guys are here for. You guys are here for Muggy. First of all, the episode had a really well animated fight. Really well animated. In fact, I got a PM from Blue Sakuga. And Blue Sakuga informed me that right here, I have it right here, that the Muggy episode, the fight between Aladdin and Tidus, was animated by the same individual who was the main animator for the first season of Magi and who did most of the action scenes in the first season. And that individual is Akira Hamaguchi. So, Mr. Miss Hamaguchi, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Domo arigato. Okay, now, that was awesome. When it came to them flying around the sky, we have Aladdin covered in the red aura, we have Titus covered in the yellow lightning aura, and they're countering each other. Well, basically, Aladdin's doing all these basic magics, and Titus is countering. It got to the point where like, he did his signature, his quote unquote signature, Hadi Hadi Fagar. And then, bam, Titus counters with like this giant ice like mountain thing. And it was cool. And when it came to making Ugo out of sand using gravity magic, that was cool shit too. But Titus counters, and Titus counters by doing like this combination composite aberration type magic, where which he combines types one, two, and eight, and he makes the same effect as like a volcano, where he's firing all these like giant, well, he's firing like all these energy balls, and like they blow up. So, and he states that like magic is at its best. When you can combine the different types of elements that the Rook stem from. So, it was very impressive. But where Aladdin, or uh, I'm sorry, where Titus has his strengths, so does Aladdin. And Aladdin, he's able to counter with sheer experience. Because Aladdin's been through a lot of battles. So, even though he's a kid, Aladdin is a battle hard, he, he's a battle-hardened warrior. And... He combines types 5 and 6, sound and air, I think. And he makes like this sound staff thing. <clears throat> Where in which? Like he, he touches the ground, and the ground turns into dust because the sound is vibrating the wind or vibrating the air molecules at such a high frequency. So he's able to actually break through the Borg of Titus after like doing some martial arts skills. So. Cause you know, when you're trained by Miss Myers, you ain't no bitch, hand hand. You ain't no hand hand bitch. So he's doing all this stuff. And basically, it wants to be a cross counter where in which we see the gem on Aladdin's forearm being revealed. But also there's a gem on Tisa's forearm that's also revealed. Now they have two different purposes. Well, they have two different uh they have two different purposes. Where in which in the case of Aladdin, it's to stop the Rook from going to his body so he's not discovered as being a maggot. Where in the case of Titus, it's a device that can communicate with the person that he's working for because he has a mission. And that person is the Magi of the Lem slash Rem Empire, Sherazade. So she's working, I'm sorry, he's working for her. And the thing here is that Titus believes that Aladdin is working for another Magi. 
but we all know that Aladdin is a Magi himself. So that whole combat scene was very nice. It was very well animated. So again, Akira, thank you. No more arigato. Now, when it comes to the other stuff of the episode, very important stuff here going on. First of all, the dream, because Tidus tries to take out Aladdin because he jumped the gun pretty much. Got a little too excited. Tries to take him out after the fight. And, and that's against the rules. So he does the magic. And then the leader of the country, Matal Mogamet, has a staff. He simply does like a root thing. And like the Tease's own weapon goes in the air. But the effects still damage a lad to the point where he is in bed, bandaged up. He wakes up. He, he has a dream. And. That dream is the King Solomon dream where we see his household that are now pretty much like the jinn that we see of this, you know, common era. And because, you know, Amon, he's talking and we see Zagon, we see Paimon, but they're humans. But now they're jinn. So Solomon did something. All right. Solomon has done a lot of shit. And it, what he's done exactly, that whole story hasn't been fully revealed, it hasn't been fully detailed. And that's one of like the biggest mysteries in not only the manga, but also the anime. More so in the anime, because the anime is not, is, is not as far as the manga, very obvious. Now, when it comes to the dream itself, what's very important to note is that we see like this, because King Solomon was about to unify the world. All the religions, all the countries, and so on and so forth, they're gonna be under one king vessel user king Solomon, whatever right this th this guy the king of kings triple h and what happens is that we see another scene and apparently shit didn't go the way it was supposed to go obviously it never does what happens is that all of a sudden the sky opens up like there's some dark thing that comes down some dark thing and then king Solomon says the magicians even to the end they wouldn't have it something along those lines so what he's implying here is that the magicians, he was about to unify the world, and the magicians said no. They said, fuck that shit. It ain't happening. This dark thing comes down, it touches down, and then the area that we see is completely petrified. The people are like covered in like this, yeah, like they're petrified or like they're dead. Oh no, they're, they're dead pretty much. And then we see everything's covered in darkness. And the sun itself is just black. So, that dream is very important. It really is. But what's also very important to know is what lasts is after the dream. Because I can, I, I'm not going to go into full detail here. Because you guys are the anime watchers. And the anime guys, obviously, are not as far as the manga guys. Obviously. So, the manga readers know more about what's occurring than the anime watchers do. That's, that, that's the way it is. But... What's very important to note and to think about is what Aladdin says after the dream. Because the dream itself is, the dream itself is that, ugh, whoa. The dream itself is actually very important. But what he says after the dream when he wakes up is also very important. Where he states that there's no one here like me. I am different than not also than not only the other Magi, but also different than Alibaba, Morgiana. No one here is like me. So, what that fully entails, I will leave it up to you to decide, the anime viewers. I know what it is, but you guys, need to, you know, because I don't believe that it was actually stated in this season or the last season. So, let me leave it at that. Let me leave it at that. Because I did make theories on it last season, when I was only an anime watcher. But, but when I read the manga, I knew it, I found out what it was, and I'm like, uh, so... Okay, all right, fine. Now, the episode itself, the character development is mainly towards Titus. Because Titus, A, we find out that he is a person working for Sheridan's Arte. B, he has this strange tie to the root that's not really explained yet. But also, we get to see his personality. We get to see his mentality. We get to see... Well... It's funny because at the beginning there was like a there was like a, a comedic scene here where after he's chosen to be like the number one student amongst their year, 
because people said that. <coughs> well, <coughs> well, because people said that it was going to be Aladdin, but it wasn't him. It was Titus, and we find out that he's part of like this family, the Ali Q's family in the Lemon Empire. You know, high echelon up there, and. The comedic scene here, of course, being that Aladdin and him, well, Titus is trying to make Aladdin his friend. He's like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm going to make you my friend. You know, give me a handshake. He touches his boots. Yeah, nothing there. And he thought that he was a girl. And all the people there are like, oh, shit. Like, that was crazy. Like, Sven is just hyping himself. Like, yeah, yeah, what's up, man? You got a fat ass. What? Like, so he was hyping himself the whole hell. Guy's funny. But regardless, the thing here... Aside from Titus, when it comes to character development, it's also the lead of the country, Matal Mogamet. Now, he also gets character development too. Where in which, he was first perceived as like an evil dude. Like an evil, hardcore, malicious, bloodthirsty dude. Where in which he had no qualms killing anyone who stood in his way. And he has ties to Al-Thaman. Because of the magic tools and that kind of stuff. But now we see him. And he seems like a real nice dude. A real nice old man. He's like, Aladdin, you know, if I had a kid your age, you, like, you'd be my grandson. You know, like that kind of shit. So, I mean, his voice obviously is not, you know, Aladdin, yeah, you know, back in the day. Like, no, no, he's, he, doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't sound like that. But still, he's not what he is first perceived to be. That's just the way it is. And... Is there something deeper? Obviously. He's the leader of the country that makes these metal tools, these magic tools that have been used by robbers and, you know, people who are bad people, pretty much. Yeah, let's make it simple. Bad people. Furthermore, he has ties to Al-Thaman. Or, or at least his country do. So maybe he doesn't know what's going on. I don't know. Maybe there's someone in the shadows who was doing all this dark stuff behind his back. We don't know. But there is something strange going on here in uh, Magnostad that he should know about full well. And that's what Sinbad stated. The, dis the discrimination against the non-magicians. And it, there was something odd that was also explained in the episode too, where that was kind of talked about, but not really in full. The whole status thing. Now that Aladdin and Sphictus are second years, their citizenship has raised to level two. So it's like, wait a second, like, there are levels in your citizenship, apparently. And what that fully means, I'm not too sure. But given what Sinbad said about the discrimination against the non magicians, well, let's just say that we can assume that if there are levels, then maybe the lowest level possible would be the non-magicians. Just think about it. So, that being said, there are a lot of things that Matal Mogamet may not be involved with. Like Al Thayman, he may not be involved with. Um, like the, I'm assuming the handing out of the magic tools to like, you know, uh, barbarians and Vikings and you know, evil motherfuckers. To pillage villages and the, you know wreck ships and that kind of stuff. Maybe he's also not a part of that. But when it comes to the whole discrimination against the non-magicians, he should know full well about that. Full well. So that being said, the episode overall, the animation was on points. It was on point when it came to the fight. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And after that, it was still pretty good animation. So after that, it was still pretty good animation nonetheless. When it came to the overall story progression, <clears throat> it was there. Because now we have Aladdin and Finn, because they had the ceremony, and then they had the fight, and we found out a few things about Matal Mogamet, and Titus, of course, being a part of the Lem Empire, has this mission, and this mission was given to him by Sherazade. Of course, there is the the whole citizenship issue, odd thing going on here, and. Now we have Aladdin actually going up in grade here, where in which he can now go to the other works of the city, because it is like a city state pretty much, because they spent they spent most of the time in the academy, but now with this whole citizenship level up, they can like explore other parts probably. And 
that's it. So over the overall rating, because uh, I'm I'm stumbling, I'm I'm fumbling, I'm mumbling, I can't catch the ball and shit. But yeah, yeah, over. So let me end right here, okay? The overall rating for this week's episode of Magi, I thought it was great. I thought it was a great episode of Magi, and I'll leave it at that. So King Lightning, animation fantastic, pacing was good. Progression of story on point, character development mainly for Titus and Matal Mogamet on point. Overall, a great episode of Magi, and I'll see you guys later. Be sure to, of course, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace! Have a nice day.